So next up in our JavaScript interview series, we're going to be talking about closures. Now in this one, I've got an example of a simple closure, and then there's a closure that's got a problem having to do with the loop. So taking a quick look here, closure is happening when you use a variable inside of a function. The function is going to run later, and the variables inside of here are coming from outside of the function. They're coming from the same scope where this function was created. So this variable, a, is being created in the same scope as this variable, b, which is in the same scope as this function right here. So these are being used inside the function. The function's being run later. So that's what's creating our closure. Now in this example down here, we've got the for loop. We've got our counter variable i going from 0 to 2. It's going to loop, and it's going to call this set timeout three times. So 1,000 times 0, 1,000 times 1, 1,000 times 2. So at 0, zero milliseconds, 1,000 milliseconds, and 2,000 milliseconds, this function is going to run, and it's supposed to write out a number. But what we're going to get actually is it's going to write out 3, 3, and 3, which is not what we wanted. We wanted to write out 0, 1, and 2 at those time delays. So I'm going to give you a second to try and work this out. Uh, I have this starter code, this sample starter code, as a code just linked to in the description down below. And you can pause the video here, and I'll be back in just a moment to talk about the solution. OK, welcome back. So what we're going to do here is talk about how we solve this problem. There's two ways of approaching this. One is to not use var. Instead of var, we can use let. Let and var declare variables and treat them slightly differently. Whereas var is either globally scoped or scoped inside of its function, let is scoped inside of curly braces. So if we used let here, then this is the scope for the variable. With var, the reason we get 3, 3, and 3 is this variable exists anywhere inside the function. So we get to this point in the code. At this point, i is going to be incremented to 3. So it got to the end here. It was 2 on our last run through. And then it got incremented to 3. And then the loop is done. We do the test. We're finished. We exit the loop. And then after that, once this stack is done and the variable i is set to 3, a closure has been created around the variable, so it's protected. It's not going to be destroyed. But this function is then going to run after that point. So we tell it to write these numbers out. It's going to write out 3, 3, 3, because this variable was left at that point. It doesn't care that the variable i at the point where this was set aside changed, because the variable i was kept at that value. All right, so solutions. Let's look at one of them, which is changing var to let. And that's a very simple one. That's it. That's all we have to do. And now this will give us one, two, uh, 0, 1, and 2 because this variable is declared inside these curly braces. So it only exists in here up to the point where we get to this. Once we move beyond this, the variable is not going to exist anymore. So when the closure gets created around this variable i, it knows that variable is not going to exist anymore. I have to take it with me. And so that value i is going to be carried over, and it will be saved. At this point, i no longer exists. So knowing that it's going to be destroyed, it has to create the closure and take it with it. This one, the closure was created at this level, where i gets up to 3, and that's where it stays. OK, one alternative to that, just another quick one, is we can use bind. So even if we leave this as var, that's the problem that we're trying to solve here. Here, let me just copy this whole thing.
if we took this function and we were to capture the value of i at that point and then with the captured value of i that's what we pass off to the set timeout function that's what we're trying to achieve here so i put a set of parentheses around the whole function like that so the function is now this sort of self-contained expression then i'm going to call bind inside of bind a couple things you got to pass in the first thing is the bind argument so I'm going to say that I want to use this or null or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter that much. Then we can pass in a list of arguments. Well, I'm going to pass in i. I'm going to pass in the current value of i. This gets passed as a parameter to the function here. Now I can use the variable i here, but that gets a little confusing to understand sometimes. So I'm going to change this to an x just so you can see that it is using a different variable. So we are taking this function, we're binding it to whatever we want. We can say that uh, you know the window object or the global object or null is the context for running this function. That part's not important for here. What is important is that the fact that we're going to run this piece of code immediately as we run through the loop. This bit of code runs, we take the current value of i, we pass it into the parameter x, and that gets saved inside of here, and that is what gets set aside to run later with these delays, 0, 1 second, 2 second. So we're getting the value of i as 0, 1, and 2. It's being passed in and that's being saved. So there's three copies of this thing being saved with the appropriate value for i. All right, that's it. That's the solution. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.